Welcome to your online Uncorked Canvas Stranger Things painting class. Keep in mind this video is up for you to rewind, fast forward, replay as much as you need to to make sure that you get all the details that you want, repeat it as often as you need to, and I hope you enjoy this experience. Here are my supplies. I have a canvas, this is 11 by 14. I have my paint already out on my palette, and this is white, red, yellow, orange, phthalo blue, and black. I also have the stencils handy that I'll be using later on in the painting. On my right, I have my paper towels, my paint brushes, and my water cup all ready to go. You can get all of this in your kit if you order at uncorkedcanvas.com. So to get started, what we're gonna do is lay the foundational colors for the sky as well as the bottom of the canvas, which will eventually be the field and the road. So the first thing that I'm gonna be doing is grabbing my largest brush. I'm gonna go with that wet first. And then I'm gonna wipe off any drips on my paper towel. I also then like to squeeze off the drips off the ferrule of my brush so they don't drip onto my painting later on. I am painting first the sky, and I'm going to start by doing a gradation of lighter orange and yellow down at the bottom to a darker orange towards the top. So I'm going to mix the lighter color first. I'm going to start with my white, my lightest color. I'm going to move a pile of my white a little bit into my palette, and then I'm going to pull in a little bit of yellow and stir that in. Always add little bits of a color at a time so you can slowly add them in and change your color rather than trying to scoop up a large amount and then you have a lot harder time building your color to what you want it to be. So always start with less. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of my orange. I'm just going to tint this into an orange, orangish yellow color, but I still want it to be quite pale and I still want it to be quite yellow. So I'm going to keep building my color to get to that bright yellow. And if you look at that reference photo that comes with the kit, or the reference photo that you've got, you'll see the color at the bottom of the sky kind of peeking through underneath the clouds. That's the color, the brightest color we're looking for. Make sure you also flip your brush top and bottom, get all the color distributed throughout. Then I'm going to start at the bottom of the sky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start about, I would say, at least five fingers up from the bottom, but I'm gonna go a little bit farther than that. It's just shy of halfway down your canvas, a little bit lower than halfway. And that's where I'm gonna start my, the bottom of my sky. And I'm just gonna start with the palest color at the bottom, and very soon I'm gonna go ahead and start darkening my color as it goes upwards. So I'm gonna get a couple brush strokes high of this color at first. And then I'm just gonna get a little extra water on my brush, and then I'm gonna go in and that'll stir in with the paint as I'm making it. And that just extends the life of the paint as I'm using it. And I'm gonna go in and darken my color by adding more yellow and more orange. And by the top of the canvas, we're really shooting for like solid orange. So you can darken this quite a bit to get started. We wanna darken our color quite a bit by the top. So what I'm gonna do to blend this in, and we're not looking for a really perfect gradation. We're going to be covering it with a lot of clouds, so we don't need to make this smooth. It's actually going to help us more later on if we don't make this smooth. What I'm going to do is start by putting just a stripe of this color kind of messily over the top, and then to blend them together, I'm just going to start messy brush strokes, just kind of back and forth, pushing them into each other. And I'm going to travel down into the yellow, and if you just kind of avoid putting a lot of pressure, you just kind of light touch, you'll get the colors to distribute pretty well. I'm gonna go down the edges as well, almost in a dome, but I don't want it to look like a dome. I'm just gonna kind of bring darker around the edges as well as the top. Again, don't be too tidy with this. We want it to be messy. It's just gonna help us later on. If it's then right away, I'm gonna go ahead and darken my color even more. Yellow and orange. Make sure it's at least a few shades darker. I'm gonna start again above. Get that across. And if you have too much paint on your brush and you're trying to blend something, just kind of get your brush wiped out, cleaned out, and then you can more easily, with a little bit more control. And then I'm gonna go up to the top with just pure orange. Start at the top, work my way down. You can also mix in a little bit of red if you want to, if you wanna make it very deep down there. We will bring in red for our clouds later on. Okay. 
It's starting to dry, so we want to leave it alone, and we've got a bunch of layers going on, on later, so we're just going to leave it as it is. I'm just going to wipe off my brush real quick, and we're going to lay the foundation down below for later on it's going to be grass and of course the road right here, but we might as well tint the canvas so we don't have to cover it up so much later on. So I'm just going to take kind of a yellow, orangey mixture, I'm just mixing onto this old pile, a little bit of white in there, we don't want it to be too dark, and just kind of whatever you have left over, go ahead and get the rest of your canvas covered. If you're ever running out of paint or it's just not going into the texture of your canvas well, just get a little bit of extra water on your brush and that's going to help the paint spread a ton. While you're done using your brush, make sure it goes into your water cup. Next, we're going to dry our canvas. Next, we're going to paint the, uh, the road as well as the grass down below. So I'm going to grab my medium sized brush, get it wet first, get any drips on your paper towel. And then I'm going to mix the green that I'm going to do the grass with. So that is just a little bit of white, some yellow, about equal parts. And then just a little bit of blue at a time. This will tint your color very fast. We want to just add a little bit at a time. You can see just that little, little touch made it already green. So I want it to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to slowly add a little bit more blue. And if it gets too just blue, um, I'm just going to keep adding more yellow and it's pretty much just darkening the color, getting it a little bit, a little bit deeper with both of those. This is going to be going on top of some yellow and orange back here. So we'll take that into account with our color. We can make it a little bit extra blue. All right. And it's okay if you have a different shade of green, it's just going to be grass. So it can be really a lot of different shades of green and you'll be fine. You can get away with pretty much anything. So I'm going to first draw the lines for the road. So I'm going to be doing the grass on either side of that. So I might as well draw the road now. So towards the center of the canvas, what I'm going to do is give myself about a finger's width, kind of right where that horizon ends. You can go a little bit higher if you've decided that it just needs to be a little bit higher. You can go a little bit farther up into the sky if you need to. I'm going to give myself about a finger's width. That's where the road's going to end. And that's just going to be the gap that I need. And then on the left and right hand side, I'm going to go about two fingers up, about two fingers up. And then that's where you're just going to connect the lines to. And then you can adjust now that we kind of see what we're looking at. You can even narrow the road if you need to. It's pretty narrow at the top in the original one, but you can keep it however you want to. So you can see that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my larger brush to actually fill it in though. So I'm gonna put my medium sized brush away, grab my larger brush, do a quick little rinse out. You always wanna use the largest brush possible because it's gonna give you just more even coverage and faster coverage as well. So if you can switch to a larger brush, always do that. And then I'm just going to loosely fill in with grass straight away from those lines along that horizon you already created and fill it in from there. And if you need to mix more green like me, I'm not always the best at mixing enough color to begin with. Just kind of estimate and go ahead and fill in. If your color on one side doesn't match the other side, just make sure some of that color comes over here and they co-mingle and it'll look absolutely normal by the end. Don't forget a little bit of water in your paint will help the paint spread. So you can always add that. If you're running low on paint, you can just water it down just slightly. All right, and then you're just gonna go ahead and wipe off that brush, clean it out, and we're gonna go ahead and fill in the street. If ever you're cleaning your brush and you're trying to figure out if it is clean, all you have to do is make sure the water coming off of your paper towel is clear. Your water is going to get tinted very quickly, but you want to make sure that it doesn't have so much pigment that it's not cleaning out your brush anymore. So just make sure the water on your paper towel is clear and you have to clean your brush a couple times. That's absolutely normal, but that's how you gauge whether or not it's clean. I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of white, put it near my black, and I'm going to start with about equal parts of those two. You don't want it to be very, very dark though, because if you make it too dark, when we put the silhouettes of the boys down here, you're not gonna be able to see them very well if this is very dark. So it's better to go on the side of lighter pavement than darker. And keep in mind, gray especially will uh, dry darker than it appears on your palette. So it's better to go on the light side. I'm also gonna add just a touch of blue to it. All right, and then very simply, you're just gonna go ahead and fill in what's left. We will go back and outline the road 
So get as close as you can to the grass, but if you're feeling a little shiny, you don't want to touch the grass, that's fine. Just leave a little tiny gap. If you want to make the road feel a little bit more dynamic, what you can do is take a little bit extra black, just a little bit, darken your gray, and towards the bottom of the road, where it's farther away from the light, you can darken your gray, brush it up into that road, and just create a little bit of shading at the bottom. So what you do is you just kind of get it up the sides, down on the bottom of the road, and then same as how we kind of did the gradation in the sky, we're just going to slowly brush it with very little pressure up into the other gray that we just put down and darken it a little bit, let it blend in a little bit more. Then you're gonna wipe off the brush, put it into your water cup, and we're gonna go up into the sky and start working on that while we're waiting for the bottom part to dry out. We are gonna do layer number one of the clouds. Now, with all of the painting that we're gonna be doing up in the sky, we're gonna be building it up in multiple layers. Obviously, we have the foundational layer already on the canvas. Now with the clouds, it's gonna look a lot better and we're gonna be able to control how muddy our colors get by building it in multiple layers. So what we want to do is we want to start the lightest color first and slowly work our way towards the darker, those kind of really rich clouds that come in from the edges, as well as the large creature in the center. That's going to be after we get our layers of clouds and kind of give it a foundation for it to go into. So what we're going to be doing is focusing on orange clouds first, and then we will get all the darker stuff once that is dry. Again, that just helps us not make mud in the sky. So these first layers of clouds are gonna be painted with orange, the orange directly from your palette. You can also do some darker clouds with some red mixed in with that. If at any point it gets too dark, it really does depend on how dark you've made your sky. If it feels too aggressive in the beginning, you can mix some of your yellow and orange together and make a paler color. Again, it's all about building it up, and the slower you build it up, the more you can adjust as you go. If you go right for dark colors, then you try to erase those with things that are lighter. So it is better if you slowly build it up. So it's up to you to judge how dark your sky is and how dark a color like this looks on top of it. Now, if you add some water to it, you can also make it a little bit more transparent and you'll see some of the yellow coming through. Once we add more clouds and we build them up, um, this kind of aggressive feeling brush stroke, it's gonna combine with the other brush strokes and feel right. So it is okay for it to be a few shades darker, but just know that you can adjust it and slowly build up your colors if you choose to. So the clouds, more or less, you can see, especially use your reference for this though, for ideas, they're not really particular. We're looking for a stormy looks. So we don't want them to just be like one little cloud bank down here. We really want them kind of spiraling and filling up and coming around from the sides and really coming into the center here. So we really want that churned effect. So that being said, with the orange, we can really subtly start building that up. And then with the dark ones, we'll come in and define the shapes. So there can be a lot of pushing and pulling with this color. Not everything has to go in on one layer adjust as you feel like you need to, but to begin with, let's go ahead and kind of get a little bit more aggressive with where we decide to put these things, and we can, we can take them out later as we need to. At the bottom, you can see, and I'm just kind of doing a sketch right here. I'm just kind of starting to map out where I want this. We've got this bank that does come down from the sides and start that churned look. So I'm not necessarily doing a straight line. If it helps you to just kind of make a, here's where I want this one, and then here's where I want this one, and then you add definition, that's totally fine. But I'm gonna also, start doing this with my brush where I slowly bring the clouds in and I'm not gonna do a straight line because it's gonna help me later so I don't have as much to erase. So I'm just kind of bouncing my brush and sketching as I go. So there's like little tendrils that come up from the bottom and kind of go towards the clouds. And then from there, I just wanna start churning, kind of circling where the monster is gonna go right here. I'm gonna start circling the clouds from there and sketch in. And we can go in the area that the creature is going to be because he's going to be darker and he'll go on top of everything. So I'm just going to go ahead and start mapping out and churn around that center point. And it's kind of almost, I guess, like a heart kind of shape. Don't go too aggressively towards a heart shape, though. Maybe ignore that. And I'm going to start filling in my shape now. 
I'm gonna start getting more of a feel for what these clouds are gonna look like. Don't forget water, especially if you're using a smaller brush. You'll be able to spread it easily and quickly. The clouds that kind of have rounded edges, but also just kind of kind of messy there too. So they don't have to be smooth on those edges. And I'm just starting to fill in large, large pieces of clouds. This one's gonna be a dark one. I'm really, I'm looking the whole time. It's obviously off camera, but I'm looking the whole time at the reference. I'm not guessing where these clouds go. So that reference being right next to you, use that reference for ideas. It absolutely does not have to match whatsoever. Not exactly, for sure. So don't get married to the whole thing, but uh, definitely use it as an idea. Don't feel pressured to achieve exactly that though. It's just there to inspire you, give you some ideas, and then it's up to you to create your masterpiece. Even if it looks completely different, doesn't mean it's wrong, just different. And with this, we're all looking for a mess. It doesn't have to be the same mess. It can be a completely different mess. And I'm just building up these cloud banks. We're gonna define them again later. We're just doing this, this slow build up, the slow wash of color. And do know that your colors can cover up. If you take anything too far, your colors can cover up. Later on, you can go back even with this pale color, bring some of that back. But you can see the slow buildup. I'm leaving some of my background showing through. Of course, it's showing through the orange. My color isn't super thick. I'm watering it down too to kind of get this built up slowly. And so it's it's going and seeing through to the sky behind. And that's why we did that first. So this has a foundation. It has something that it's sitting on top of. Slowly building it up. The orange isn't gonna show too well up above. So I'm gonna go ahead and, cause I made mine quite dark up there. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of red to mine, deep in that orange. I'm just gonna do a little bit of cloud cover up here, but mostly it's gonna be dark clouds later on, pretty dark ones. You can see just a little bit of red makes it pop off the background just a little better. And then once we're on, once we've got this foundation, we'll put the mind flare, <laughs> which just is hard to say, mind flare. Um, not a flare like that you should, you know, a flare like. <laughs> it looks, the, the term mind flare looks good on paper, but trying to say that out loud is a bit hard. Uh, we're gonna put that, because he's so much darker, we're gonna put him on top of everything. But we're really framing in the spot that he's gonna be coming out of. I don't know if he is the right term, it's a creature. It's an entity. You can see that build up as it's going. It's gonna look so much better once we get some dramatic dark colors on top. Don't worry, it's coming. Don't worry. And if you're struggling to kind of figure out like how the heck to make these shapes, it's a good idea to kind of watch how I'm, I'm, I'm making a mess very intentionally. Um, that being said, you're like, well, okay, so it needs to be a mess, but but on purpose mess? How do you make a mess? So anyway, so if you take a minute and just kind of watch how I'm working my brush, that might answer some questions, even if it shows you like, oh, I don't like what you're doing. That's as much information. Knowing what you don't like is as much information as knowing what you do like. So at least watch kind of how I'm working my brush. You can see that where I came back before and it was watered down, I'm now putting a new layer of paint because that's now dry. I was working around the rest of the, the clouds. I came back and now I'm revisiting these areas. And the second layer, even stronger. I've got some red now in it and I'm just kind of building things up. Not a lot of pressure, not a lot of paint. I'm just kind of starting to build things up. Wait till we get to the dark, amazing clouds on top. Now I'll show you what you can do if you feel like you just went too far in some areas. Take some yellow, orange, and white. Pretty much create the color that's behind it in the sky. Kind of get a little bit on your brush, just a little bit, a little more yellow. Just a little bit on your brush, like mix the color and then I wipe off the extra. Just get a little on there. And then you can go back at the base of the clouds, especially, and kind of paint back up into the orange and slowly work back up that push and pull of paint. Rarely does anything in paint go on truly in that first layer. Most things need multiple, multiple additions. So you can see coming back in with that light color and going on, it's not completely painting it out, but it is creating a little more atmosphere to just soften the bottom of them. You can see that glow happening there. Now that is, it's not necessary. It's uh, 
I wouldn't say it's an advanced thing to do. If you don't feel like it's necessary, don't do it. But I like to do a little bit more work to my clouds and really build up that atmosphere. So do it if you want to. Don't stress about it if you don't. Not a necessary step. There's a point though that you gotta leave it alone. And yes, I'm saying that to myself just as much as I'm saying it to you. So I'm just gonna make sure I've got what I want down here because not a lot of the dark clouds are gonna cover this up. So I'm just kinda making sure this is done. And then I've gotta leave the sky alone for a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and do the creature, the mind flare, just a second. So let's go ahead and map out where the mind flayer is gonna go. You can use a smaller brush to do the mapping out if you want to. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take my pointed brush, use it as a sketch pen. Make sure you get it wet first. And then I'll go ahead with orange if you need to add some red so it shows up. So be it, whatever you need to do that's gonna be a couple shades darker than whatever we're drawing on top of. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the head though. And that really establishes, then it's really easy to just kind of do the, the arms um, coming back away from that. So about halfway down the sky is where the bottom of that head's gonna go. So you can give yourself a little dot right there. By the way, if you get a brush, a pointed brush, and it's got those little hairs at the end that are just not playing friendly, just get rid of them. All done. All right, so that little dot, center of the canvas, um, and then about halfway down the sky. And then from here, it's just a really elongated teardrop, really. So you kind of want to there to be a bulb at the bottom. And then you just want to drag it up and off the top of the canvas. Again, your sketch is just supposed to be enough that you can make it out. You don't have to get detailed with it quite yet. We'll fill it in in a second. Now, I do want you to bring the end to a little bit more of a point than um, a teardrop. So I'm just going to elongate that. I'm going to make the tip of that nose a little bit pointier and then drag upwards. If you overlap with some of the clouds down below, absolutely fine, the head's gonna get pretty dang dark, so it'll go on top of all that. We'll fill that in in just a second. Right now it just kinda looks like a, a flame, a flicker of flame going up. Then let's go ahead and sketch in the arms. And so it's, um, they're obviously much thicker, kinda like, um, kinda like shoulders and shoulder muscles, and then they kinda come back and break like arms and go backwards. So more pronounced on the left-hand side, we're gonna go ahead and create this kind of shape first of the shoulder coming back up and kind of halfway up the, the head here is the top right here. It's about halfway up the head to the top of the canvas. Don't worry too much about proportions here. It's a creature. If it's slightly different, no one's gonna really notice. And then I'm gonna have the more slender arm break away from that, combine with that shoulder and kind of create that shape. Not too dissimilar to the head shape. It's it. got just a little bit more of pronounced bend in that arm. Beneath that, very similar, except we kind of want it to kind of curve back and really pronounced turn like this. Kind of more like a, a dog's back leg where it kind of has that elbow that comes back like that. This all looks so much better once we shade it. Don't stress, just get the shape down. Your sketch is where you make all the accidents is absolutely okay to, to make a sketch that you're not in love with because knowing what you don't like about the sketch means that you know exactly what you want to change when it comes time to fill it in. When you, and that's, again, knowing what you don't like is as important as knowing what you do. So on the right-hand side, it's a lot less detailed. We kind of have just the arms kind of coming back. They'll disappear. They're more just kind of coming away very loosely, coming back and just disappearing into the clouds. So I'm gonna even paint a little bit of my red and orange and have it actually disappear into the clouds here. You can even do the same over here. So I'm just taking that same color that I had from before, filling in the bottom of the arm, and that way it's really actually gonna disappear into that cloud. You can already see how dimensional that looks just with that. You can go ahead real quick and just do a base layer, fill it in with orange, just, you know, for fun. You got your brush out, fill it in. Don't worry about it even being solid, just get it covered. That way, if you have a really pale sky behind it, I don't know how your clouds, how you um, built those up. So if it's really pale behind it, it's good to have a little bit of a foundation of a darker color. And then once you fill it in, you can also start to really see how the shape's gonna develop and you can continue to, to adjust in this sketch phase. 
So I'm just gonna make this head just a little bit longer because I really want it to come to that point. I think that's gonna adjust nicely. Cool, cool, all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this brush in my water. I'm gonna go ahead now and dry off my sky and I'm gonna go ahead and press ahead and finish off the sky. Get the dark um, mind flare filled in and then once I'm done with that, maybe we'll bring in the dark clouds around it once I know the spacing, once I got um, this guy filled in. So I'm gonna go ahead and just dry off my canvas and I will be back in one second. All right, so I know it's a little bit hard to see um, the outline for this creature on camera. That's why that photo reference is gonna be super helpful, but you might just go ahead and wait and see once I've finished filling it in, what it's gonna look like before you finish off your sketch. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of go over a little bit more of the details with my darker color now that this is dry. So you can grab your sketch pen again and start and, and redefine your edges if you need to. I'm gonna start, it's almost gonna be pure black. I'm gonna do a little bit of red in there, just so it's not straight up black to begin with. Still a very dark color. And the outline of the head, this is gonna be the darkest part because this is what's closest to us. Again, this elongated teardrop. And then have it come down to a little bit of a point, kind of that flat nose area down at the bottom. And then mostly you wanna fill it in really dark on the left hand side. And then as you go over to the right hand side, I'm just gonna kinda of clean up my brush a little bit, grab a little extra red. And I'm going to fill that in with just, it's gonna look like a little bit of shading, just having a slightly more reddish color. And once we get dark in the clouds around this, it'll also look way more, way more gooder. All right, next I'm going to go ahead and get an even lighter color with more red. And just a little bit of black. That black goes really far really quickly, so I'll hold back on that and slowly build it up if you need to. And this is what I'm gonna do the shoulders with. So I want this to be a darker color here because this is the arm that's closest to us or the tentacle or whatever you wanna call it. And so I want this to be lighter than the head but darker than the arm that I'm eventually gonna put behind it. And then as it goes towards the top of the canvas, go pretty close to the top. We're gonna bring in some clouds to meet up with it. But continue that dark color and just kind of let it fade. We'll bring clouds eventually down to meet it and come down and fill it up. So you don't have to, don't have to take it all the way to the edge quite yet. And then I'm gonna use that same kind of color for the right hand side, because this is again closer to us. So I'm gonna do that shape. But then as I go to the right hand side, I'm gonna clean up my brush a little bit just to again get more control over what color I mix next. I'm gonna go with the lighter color, more red, less black. And that's what I'm gonna take to the side here. I'm gonna even take some of the extra off and kind of just put a little bit of color here. I'm doing a circular motion to have the paint just disperse and fade away a little bit easier without it looking stripy. And I'm just gonna have these disappear into the clouds here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and darken slightly the one on the top with a little bit extra black, because again, that one's closer to us just like before. Just on the other side. And I've got very little paint on my brush. And you can see how that's really dimensional now. And again, once we bring in dark clouds, and this doesn't look like just a weird floaty thingy, It'll look a lot better. I'm just gonna take a little bit of red. I don't want this one as dark. I'm just gonna slightly darken this back arm, especially more towards the body. Let it fade as it goes towards the cloud. And you can definitely come back with the original color, just orange and or red, and you can paint back up into these arms if you need to have them fade 
you can do it just a little bit more manually later rather than trying to control the brush so much. So it's up to you. What you end up with, you can go back in and change up as you go. This is acrylic paint. It's very forgiving. It's something you can go back in and as soon as it's dry, you can paint right back on top of whatever you want to. It's very forgiving. That being said, that still means you have to be patient with it because you still need it to dry. If you have a blow dryer, then you can dry things even faster. Uh, that's what I use off camera. I use a little heat gun. If you got one of those, it's gonna help. I use that even when I'm painting my own pieces because sometimes like I really gotta work on this thing and I don't wanna wait for it. So if you're impatient, don't make that make you do steps that you should be waiting for, uh, waiting to work on. Make it instead get you that blow dryer or some other, some other tool. All right, so let's go ahead and leave this guy alone for just a minute. We'll be able to adjust things if we need to, and we'll know what that means when we get the clouds in, those dark clouds that really come in from the edges and really make it look like it's spiraling around him. So once we get that, that's gonna inform us better for the next step. I'm gonna go back to my medium-sized brush, and I'm gonna clean that guy out. And we're gonna be using very similar colors to what we just painted uh, the Mind Flare in. So it's gonna be reds, and blacks. The red goes a lot farther than the, or the black goes a lot farther than the red, so be adding that tentatively, slowly build it up, and generally speaking, get to the deepest blacks around the edges, the perimeter, that will frame it in, and get a little bit lighter colors towards the center. Um, but that also being said, have some pretty dark pieces coming in towards the creature. You can start in the center or towards the edges, whatever you want to do, whatever's going to make you feel more comfortable to slowly build it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm mostly going to visit the top of the clouds and push these shadow colors to kind of define the edges of those clouds. If that feels too harsh to you, wipe off your brush, pick up a little bit extra red and use that to scrub out that harsh line. So even if you're like, oh crap, that was too dark. Don't let that deter you. Just kind of make it blend. That also being said, I like to use my finger and blend a little bit, just with my hand. So we want this to overlap and kind of come into the arm on the right hand side. Don't spend too much time on one cloud. We got more to do. And then I'm going to go in with my dark and I'm going to start just kind of, you don't have to always have it on top of a cloud that you did earlier. You can invent some clouds. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my brush. This is where I'm really defining the shape. So I'm going to be a little more particular with my brush stroke. So what I do is I kind of start with the broad end on the sides. I'm just kind of creating this kind of bumpy top. And then as I come in, I'm starting to flatten my brush. You can see I started almost the whole width of the brush. I'm just kind of creating that. And then I come in and I've got it flat. And that's where I taper it out and let it, let it flow naturally. The faster you do it, the more natural it's going to look. So don't take your time too much on doing that. But the more you do it, the more natural it's going to look. So I'm just kind of bringing in the definition to the top of the clouds here. Letting my paint run out. Or pick up that red to have it blend at the bottom. And it doesn't have to look really happy and pleasing to the eye. This is a storm from another realm. Like, you don't have to make this tidy and neat. We're not looking for Bob Ross clouds here. We're looking for... Uh, the end of the world clouds. So make a mess happen. It's totally fine. Make it look like it's an inferno. I'm not looking for tidy. All right. So this is my red and black mixture still. This is where now we can really define up above. We can bring in some dark clouds. I don't have a sketch from before. I'm looking at that reference photo. I am looking at that reference photo though. I don't have a lot of paint in my brush. I'm just slowly building it up. And I'm doing circular motions. I'm trying to build a whole cloud here. But then as I get towards those edges, I'm gonna really darken my color, overlap it. Black is a lot stronger than all the colors you're putting it on top of. So it's good if you slowly build that up with some red instead. Make black go towards the edges of your canvas. Whenever you've got too much on your brush, you're trying to blend something, clean out your brush in between and then sweep out the bottom of the clouds. Now, I'm keeping track of the sky and I know what I'm shooting for. If you're new to painting, if this is one of your first paintings, you are amazing and keep going. You've got this, you absolutely do. But it can still feel a little bit daunting to look at a sky that has nothing in it and just say, oh, I can see the clouds, let's do this thing. 
it's pretty daunting. It's a whole sky you're trying to create here. So if you need to create sketches with pencils and give yourself more of a coloring book where you give yourself a little drawing of where you want a cloud to come in, even if it's a little sketch or a little idea, that can give you a little bit more information. And if that helps you to then execute, knowing that you have an idea already spelled out for yourself, you just draw it very lightly, you've got your little, self, uh, your little idea, that can help you to more, um, just with more confidence, go into the next step. As you're going, uh, also make sure that you're stepping away from your canvas. Up close, you'll see all the brush strokes from a uh, step backwards. You're gonna see a much bigger picture. You're gonna see a lot more what um, you're actually doing up there. So do step back from your painting. See if maybe your clouds look a little bit more uh, substantial. They look a little bit more finished from a distance. Clouds especially, they're not supposed to look perfect and tidy. There's a, there's a lot of different weather out there. They don't have to look like any one thing. What's fun about this painting again though is we're looking for that mess. We're looking for that inferno up in the sky up here. So this is where I'm going back in. If you see that reference photo, you'll see there's a little bit more of an actual churning that's happening over on the left hand side where he's really emerging from the sky. So I'm really going to actually create an actual spiral kind of coming in. This is where I'm going to connect with his arm over these top clouds. I'm going to come down and you can even draw actual lines. Clouds, clouds can be uh, not completely fluffy. They can also be just lines in the sky. Slowly build that up. Come in and, and meld with his arm. Like it really looks like he's coming out of the sky. He's starting to look scary, isn't he? All right. And then I've got one more that I want it to be a little bit red. So I'm just gonna go ahead. And you can really push that inferno feel, that, that spiral. You can really make it way more churny, way more circular than I've got here. And um, it's only gonna look way more cool. So feel free to really push those clouds in more of a circular pattern. See what you come up with. I'd love to see that. You can get away with a lot with this guy. This is all about experimenting here. All right, I'm gonna go with a little bit deeper black now that I've really got this center done. I'm going with pure black. I'm gonna go start at those edges. I'm gonna get the extra off my brush and then I'm gonna start using the same kind of technique where I'm just kind of, kind of scrubbing the paint, letting it run out. I'm doing circular motions, but this is where I'm bringing some deep blacks from those edges down into the clouds. And if you make it really dark and, and uh, black, that just means it's a, big old storm coming in. So don't shy away from making some drama in your sky. And we still got lightning coming into our sky later on. So we'll be able to fill in some of those gaps. If you feel like you've got a large gap, we'll put some lightning on top of it. And now we're done, we can kind of decide where we need to maybe get the limbs a little bit farther into the clouds or bring the clouds farther in to reach the limbs. Whatever you need to now to adjust what you've got. All right, if you're going back to any of your orange areas though, and you're trying to now kind of adjust from the center out where you have your lighter colors, absolutely clean out your brush very thoroughly. The last thing you want to do is start into your orange and have any black already in there messing with it because that'll overpower what you've got. So we're going to go ahead and let this stay for a little while. Let it dry, come back for more layers later if you decide to. But it's a really good idea to just kind of leave the sky for a minute. We're going to come back later and do some lightning. We can come back later and redefine some things if we need to, but at some point we just got to let it be for just a few minutes. So let's go ahead and start visiting down below. What we can do now is because everything is dry, we can go ahead and actually stencil on our, our little dudes down here. So I have these already laid out and I've got here these guys go on the left the two connected I've got this guy and of course we'll do the bikes a little bit later on make sure they can all fit they can overlap a little bit like his arm can go over and then you can go ahead and trace with a pencil if the background isn't too dark 
if you've got a fine point sharpie um, you can go ahead and trace them you don't want to trace them in paint because unless you're extremely careful you can try it totally fine but if you are to trace them with paint for one it's way harder to control but for another any of that paint could get smushed underneath and then uh, dragged across your canvas you don't really have a lot of control and it can just get smushed and pushed anywhere so it's better to use a sharpie fine point if it's not a fine point then the shapes are just going to get pretty big and hard um, hard to really define later with our paint um, and otherwise uh, pencil is totally fine as long as this isn't too dark to see that. Aya will be right back and I'll have these guys traced in just a moment. Alright, so I've traced them and now I'm going to fill them in with black. While these guys are drying, let's go ahead and just do the tree line up above, and that gives this a second out down here to dry. I'm gonna go with my medium brush, and it's gonna be a dark brown color. And how you make brown is by taking some orange and adding either blue or black to it. Now if it's too orangey looking and you want it to go a little bit deeper, add a little bit of red and then blue or black. And that's gonna be a deep, almost black brown. We want it to be pretty dark, and we'll even darken it a little bit towards the edges into pure black, but this will be the start for the center. So right above where the road ends, go ahead and give yourself just a little bit of um, a little stripe right above the roadway. Kind of like a brush's width, and that's where the road kind of goes off into the distance here. And then, I'm going to go ahead and darken my color just slightly with a little bit of black. And then on either side of that, I'm going to take a tree line. And I'm just going to go right on top on either side and lower it into the grass just a little bit. And once I finish this up, it'll be a little more obvious what I'm talking about. So that is some tree lines off in the back or some hills. And then these on either side of the trees that are in the foreground. So once you add a little stripe here, let's go ahead and do that with our darker color on either side. We're just creating a little bit of depth, depth of field, if you will. And then we're just going to do some little, little trees. I'm going to brush flat into that stripe that we just did. And I'm going to start kind of going up and down, almost like it feels like maybe doing grass, uh, where it's just kind of little blades here and there. Every once in a while you could do a little bump here and there. It could be a different kind of tree. And then up and down here and there. And we're just creating a very vague tree line here. A little bump here and there, a little mound here and there, and then again up and down into trees, kind of like evergreens. And then little bumps here and there for a nice grove. Alright, so these guys, for me, they're already dry, but if you're still waiting for them to dry, let's go ahead and do a little bit of details around them. Go ahead and grab your pointed brush. Let's go ahead and do the lines in the road. So I'm gonna do the white lines first. And obviously if you accidentally drag into the people, not that big of a deal. You can just go ahead and paint black back over this white line. So in the distance, we want this line to be thinner. So I'm gonna use just the point of my brush. And you can see it's gonna overlap your, your uh, the boys just a little bit. But as I'm going down, I'm gonna also increase the the width of the, the shape, the line, and then I'm going to put full pressure down at the bottom with this pointed brush. And I'm leaving a tiny gap of gray on the outside. We're also still going to outline our row just a little bit, but mostly towards the bottom. So a thin line, slowly increase, 
come downwards. Don't be afraid of overlapping the, the boys. We'll paint black book on, back on top of them. You can just take some black real quick. Clean up your lines. Make sure those edges are nice and tidy. And all done there. And if you're still waiting for them to dry, let's go ahead and do the fence. So this is also receding off into the background. So right above, pretty much right above their heads, we wanna go like at least a finger higher than their heads. And we're gonna have it start a little bit thicker towards the top here. And as it goes towards the end, we're gonna have it get just a little bit thinner. So maybe increase the pressure here. We're just painting the lines kind of receding off into the background. So it should be a slight angle. You can even start at the top if you want to. And when you're trying to get this brush back to its original size, make sure you've got water in it first. Then fill it up with black and then spiral it back to its original size. And that gets all the excess paint out of there. And then what you're going to do is just add the top piece. Like that. And then the brace is going up and down. These are going to get taller towards the edges, shorter as they go to the end, farther away. They don't have to be straight or tidy. This is out in some field somewhere. They don't have to be tidy. And then the next step is going to be finishing up the boys down here and their bicycles. So of course the shape we're going for in the bicycles is first the handlebars and their hands are going to be on top of those handlebars. So say this is one of the arms coming down and then we've got the handlebar going across and then we're going to have this piece and usually that means it's going to run into a body right here and then we wouldn't see any of the cross pieces that are in front of their body. We might see a tire coming down and you'll see once it runs off the bottom of the canvas you'll see where you can have those end. So we're looking for this cross piece, this piece coming down, and it's gonna be the opposite on the other side. So I'll show you that. So this is the tire, this is the handlebars, and then this would be like their hand coming down. Do not draw your hands like that, don't, don't do it. On the other side, it's going to be maybe only the bottom of the handlebar, and I'm just pulling this up bigger. This is kind of what we're gonna be doing on our painting. I just wanna make sure you guys can see it nice and clear. And then the wheel down below, his arm is covering up the whole handlebar up here. His little arm, you know, is covering that up. So we just see that, and then his body coming down, which is all black. And it'll be way more obvious once we actually do this on the painting. And then over on the far right hand side, we see a little bit more of the bike. So we've got his arm coming down here. His body is a little bit farther out to the side. So we see a little bit more of the handlebar going across, a little bit of that curve. Then we're also gonna see this cross piece right here going down into his leg, and then the wheel wherever it ends off the bottom of your canvas here. Cool, cool. All right, so take your time in drawing those. With the, um, you can also draw it maybe with a Sharpie or a pencil first so you can easily erase it if you want to. Keep in mind the gray that we made the road very easily covers up any gray that you decide or any black that you decide is not working for you. So clean out your little brush, your pointed brush. Pure black, just like the boys, they should be pure black silhouette. I'm just gonna go from left to right. Right underneath this hand, this arm right here, where those connect, it's a little alcove. And of course, if you have slightly different uh, proportions, it's gonna be totally fine. It's gonna look like a bike, especially once we get this all filled in. It's gonna look like a bike. That's that. Independently of the, the people, these are really vague shapes that mean nothing, but once you get them in context, come on, they're bicycles, right? All right, we are, we are nearing the end. We're getting close, you guys. Let's go ahead, we've got this little brush and we have a little bit of black on the brush. Let's go ahead and just do a little bit of edging to the road over here, especially down towards the bottom. Just a little line at the bottom here. You can go a little farther. You can go the whole way if you want to. Just make sure it tapers, gets narrower the farther away it goes. So it should thin out just like the white did. There you 
go. That just gives a little bit more gravity down here. Now, if you look at the reference, you'll see that there is a little bit of grass. Don't go too crazy if you want to skip this step. There's a little bit of grass with a little bit of our brown that we had from before. A little bit of our brown. You can even do a dark green instead. You could do some dark brownish green. Blue and yellow in my orange and black mixture. Just a little bit here. And you could do some little bits of grasses coming down into those corners. That's only if you're feeling like you want to. You definitely don't need to include it to change much of your painting. But I like to just kind of get a little bit tucked into those corners so it feels a little more grounded, if you will. Just little, little pieces of grass coming in. Just at the bottom. But you can go as far as you want to with that. In the original one, you'll see it in brown. I just did a little bit of a dark, dark green. Otherwise, it's just kind of a flat color, so I like to just do a little, little tiny bit of texture where I can tuck that in really subtly, so it's not just a flat green color. Last step. We're literally to the last step, you guys. What we're going to do is paint some lightning. This is just as you'd imagine it. It's going to be some squiggly lines, wherever you decide to put them. So in the original one, you can see there's some yellow and white for some variation in color. If you want to just do it in pure white you can, but if you want to do both colors like in the original one, just some kind of equal parts yellow and white, and you want it to be kind of in the background on the layer that he is, uh, so I'm kind of going to do it behind some of the clouds, and it really is just kind of, I'm going to start kind of moving my whole arm and jerk my whole arm around into these squiggly lines. Kind of give yourself direction, but then let your arm just kind of like jerk around and let the paint sometimes run out, let it get a little bit weird or fade somewhere, um, and increase the pressure, use the point sometimes, use the whole brush, uh, just kind of variation in here. You're just looking for squiggly lines here. Um, and then you can go back in and kind of highlight some areas with a little bit pure color, just kind of make it pop a little bit more, up to you. And this is one of my favorite parts. It's just kind of like, okay, now we're in here and we're just gonna go ahead and add, and let my arm just kind of like wiggle Let's just do it. Uh, and then you can do that as much as you want. I'm going to do pure white here and there. And I'm going to use the point sometimes and kind of just, I'm going to give my hand just kind of like a mini, mini stroke or electric shock, if you will, while I just try to get some lightning here. And let it disappear into the clouds. Let it go behind maybe his arm here, up here the other side. Make it look like the sky is really three dimensional. It's coming from the background. Um, you can have multiple arms coming off of, I mean, like, just go crazy with the lightning. This is, this is the fun part. We're not looking for anything specific. But do have it interact with the clouds by going behind it, it's appearing on the other side of it. Really have some fun with it. You can go with as much crazy lightning as you want. So this is kind of where the original one ends with this much lightning, but you can go more crazy if you want to. All right, so that lightning is the last official step to the painting. That is everything now included. Now it's up to you, now that you've got every element in there, it's up to you to then decide if you wanna adjust things, if you wanna change up the clouds, you wanna go back in and add more lightning, you wanna add any details down below, up to you where you wanna go with it. But if you are happy with it, don't do anything else. Less is more. It's good to keep it dynamic and simple sometimes. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had a lot of fun. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.